Our final reading for today comes from the book of Hebrews, chapter 13, verses 1 through 8, and then verses 15 through 16. It can be found on page 213 of your pew Bibles or in the back of the bulletin. Let us listen for God's word. Let mutual love continue. Do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers, for by doing that, some have entertained angels without knowing it. Remember those who are in prison as though you were in prison with them. Those who are being tortured as though you yourselves were being tortured. Let marriage be held in honor by all and let the marriage bed kept, be kept undefiled, for God will judge fornicators and adulterers. Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. For he has said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So we can say with confidence, the Lord is our helper. I will not be afraid. What can anyone do to me? Remember your leaders, those who spoke the word of God to you. Consider the outcome of their way of life and imitate their faith. Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. Through him, then, let us continually offer a sacrifice of praise to God that is the fruit of lips that confess his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. The grass withers and the flower fades, but the word of our Lord stands forever. Amen. Well, oftentimes at camp, or at the beginning of a new youth group year, or, or at the beginning of a, a small group, the group takes time to make a group covenant, a list of things they think are important to cultivate community. Usually they are things like respect each other, or listen when someone else is talking, or be kind to one another. Whether that community is for a week or for a year, each person in the group covenants or promises to live into those aspirations. They are words the group lives by. Our reading from Hebrews today gives us words for the church to live by. They are things that help cultivate community let mutual love continue, show hospitality to others, remember those who are in prison and who are suffering, honor your marriage vows, do not love money above anything else, remember that God is with you always, pray for your leaders, do good, share what you have. These are the aspirations we are urged to live into as a community of faith. In today's language, you could say they are our core values. In many ways, this list, these words to live by, are examples of the foundation of them all, right? Namely, mutual love, right? That this list, all the things that follow, are examples of how one shows mutual love. Let mutual love continue begins this whole passage. And the first example is by showing hospitality. Professor Eric Keen wrote this concerning hospitality and our text for today. He says, the Greek word that is traditionally translated in English, English by hospitality literally means love of the strange. Many ancients were locked into lives of routine and did not stray far from their places of birth. Life was difficult and mobility was limited. One way in which the world became larger was to open one's home, however poor you were, to those that came from the outside. Hospitality was provided then by those who had love of the strange, by those who were curious about the wider world, right? Maybe love of the unknown might even be a better way to translate that. So these unknown seekers of hospitality brought news and stories of the wider world and broke up open one's little world one's little provincial world. There was a kind of marvelous exchange then of mutual benefit between the host and the guest. The guest received protection, right? Because inns were kind of dangerous places. The guest received protection and food and company. Hosts were led out of themselves and their little worlds. Those locked into deadly routines were engaged by that 
which was outside the camp, so to speak. It is an approach to this outside world with which some contemporary parishioners, us, we might want to be better acquainted with, he says. Obviously, too, the old traditions of hospitality are in play here as well. Right, this reference in verse two of entertaining angels unaware is thought to refer to when Abraham and Sarah entertained or gave hospitality to three visitors who were angels. So rather than obligation, love of the strange provides the opportunity to be blessed by exposure to the wider world that God cares deeply about. But that's not all. In the church's love of the strange, one actually encounters Christ and so are led out of ourselves. Hospitality then is a gift that feeds and nourishes us as well as our guests. Isn't that a lovely way to think about hospitality as a gift to both parties involved? It is a wonderful way to show mutual love. But not only is hospitality a gift of food and shelter and broadening of horizons, it can also be a gift of wholeness and healing, right? When we speak of hospitality, we have to consider the words hospital and hospice. They come from the same root. It's not an accident that these are places where healing and wholeness are practiced. Mutual love continues by restoring people to good health or by helping them move from this life to the next with dignity and comfort. So this mandate that says, do not neglect to show hospitality to strangers for by doing that some have entertained angels without knowing it. Well, it became a reality a couple of weeks ago at the Emmaus Cafe. And I thought about this verse from Hebrews. There was, let's say, a bit of a kerfuffle at the Emmaus Cafe a couple of weeks ago. One of the guests, John, kept getting stirred up by some of the other guests. And voices were raised, words were said, fights were threatened. So I decided to sit with John for a bit. Still more words were said, voices were raised, and more fights were threatened. But he apologized for his part in the disturbances. And then he, the next thing he said caught me off guard and reminded me sometimes we have no idea what is going on with the people that we meet. He asked if he could check out a book from our library. He said he had been reading one of the books called The Son of Laughter, and it stopped me in my tracks, and it made my day. I said, you've been reading a book by one of my favorite authors. Anybody want to guess who that is? Greg? Frederick Buechner, right. Frederick Buechner, son of laughter, who is, the son of laughter is Jacob, right? Isaac's name means laughter. It happens that John has a son named Jacob. So we talked about the book for a few moments, and then I said, you can check out a book anytime from our library. And he apologized one more time, and he left for the day. And I have to be honest that I might be stretching it a bit to call John an angel, at least in the way that culture portrays them with cherub faces and halos and wings floating above the earth. But by a biblical definition of an angel being a messenger, John certainly is an angel. Because the message he gave me was this, be careful in judging people by their outward appearance or even their actions. I never thought in a million years he was going to tell me he was reading a book by Frederick Buechner from our library and that we would have a conversation about that book. You never fully know the person you are encountering. And if you take the time to show them hospitality and love, they just might surprise you. And I have John, the angel, to thank me for that. Now, hospitality isn't the only way mutual love continues. Mutual love continues in the empathy we have to those who are in prison or who are being tortured. Maybe the most loving thing we can do is see these people, recognize their humanity and love them as our brothers and sisters and let them know they are not forgotten. Mutual love 
continues in the relationship between spouses. Their love is one of fidelity and steadfastness. Mutual love continues when we value our relationship with God and people over money and things, when our priorities are in the right place. Mutual love continues when we do good and share what we have. These are certainly some words to live by. And 13-year-old Chase Nyland Square certainly lives by them. You may have heard about Chase in the news lately. Chase has a big heart, and when he and some of his fellow classmates heard that there were students in their school in need, their school is Port Allen Middle School in Port Allen, Louisiana, they put their heads together, and the Port Allen Middle School pantry was created. In other words, Pam's pantry was created. That's what they call it. It's a clothing closet, and it has hygiene products and, and lots of other things, and Chase helped the staff put this pantry together, and soon after the donations, soon after that donations came, and they kept coming, and they continued to keep coming in. According to the Good Morning America reporter Nicole Pelletier, who interviewed Chase, he recounted that my favorite part about helping with the pantry is getting types of clothes and sorting them and giving them out to various people. It makes me feel good because I know that I can make a difference in my school. Chase continues to work in the pantry, sorting clothes and other donations so the staff can give them to students in need. And this isn't the first time that Chase has lived by the words, do good and share what you have. He has hosted dinners for senior citizens, and he collected over 700 pairs of socks to be given out at a local food pantry. Chase not only shows mutual love by doing good and sharing what he has, he encouraged and enables others to do so. The writer of Hebrews wants the early church to know how to be a true community. He gives us words to live by that has its foundation in mutual love. And it continues by welcoming the stranger among us and offering hospitality. It continues by caring for those who are imprisoned and facing suffering. It continues by being faithful in our most important relationships. It continues by being content with what we have, and it continues for praying for our leaders. And it continues by doing good and sharing what we have. But these words to live by, they're not exclusive. It's not an exhaustive list. So I'm wondering what your list would be. What would you add? to this list from Hebrews. What would you say it takes to be the church? What are your words to live by? Amen.